for me this is a special exhibition because it's the first exhibition uh, that I've really made that has been dedicated to the role of objects in my work and I see it almost as a selection of still life pictures but not quite. Um, I first became uh, interested in the role of objects when I was looking for polemics in culture, polemics in people's lives that um, they could sort of, people could sort of relate to. I mean, for instance, I was looking at the role of tower block, the, the idea of the tower block as a polemical symbol in contemporary life and the office desk and various things like that. But also I was looking at this idea of the language of objects. I first read a paper right back in 1963 by uh, Gordon Pask who was talking about object language and I didn't quite understand what this meant at the time. But what he was really discussing was the way we perceive the world around us, can perceive the world around us as, as objects. He saw this as a reductive type of perception. Um, where it's based on the idea of a sort of transmissional relationship between the perceiver and the perceived. And in, within this uh, reductive sort of relationship, the person becomes an object, or an object itself becomes sort of monumental. And, you know, he was looking at the, the, the interesting thing that stems from that is. Um, the idea of objects in a kind of endless uh, time base as sort of um, monuments really, the monumental nature of objects uh, in their kind of contained reductiveness. So he was specifically think, you know, when you think about objects in your uh, daily life, they're objects that are tools, they're objects that are, I don't know, remind you of the past, they're objects that donate the future. And uh, the objects that sort of um, you give you a kind of stability, a kind of feeling of being modern or being in, moving in the culture you're in or being stable within it, quite often are, are sort of reductive and monumental. And they're, they're, um, I saw this connection between, for instance, um, domestic objects and architecture, you know, and I saw both of these things were denying almost the society around people. Uh, so I'm interested in the idea of this sort of endless kind of um, stream, really, of uh, time-based data, which or information, and within it, you know, these things kind of arrest it at the moment, you know, and can, and they're in, in that moment they're sort of contained uh, set of references which are, uh, which in a way you can't really disturb, you know, you just have to kind of um, uh, passively uh, take them in. Um, that's quite different from a, a network of exchange where obviously the perceiver and the perceived are in a kind of uh, interactive relationship. So for me, this exhibition brings together a whole group of works that haven't been put to, you know, are not commonly seen like that. They might be seen in relationship to other works to do with directly to do with people and things. Um, and uh, the role of, um, you know, the vase and things like that I saw as, I sort of, um, I became fascinated by because of their monumental uh, sort of architecture. Here they were in a domestic space but in fact, in a sort of way, the language of it, especially so-called 20th century um, uh, design, and, um, has, is almost like a denial of the sort of uh, complexity of social, social life and so on. The works of the exhibition comprise a series of drawings, films, and a series of time-based wall installations. And these and there's one or two earlier works which came from the uh, early 70s, uh, 80s. Um, so the 
if you look at the drawings, a lot of these drawings are, uh, or the recent ones, I look at the idea of transition, the idea of one thing becoming another, the idea that uh, the world we live in is not necessarily just a one level of resolution, that we can look at the same thing through different levels of res resolution and we see different things. And similarly, um, you know, I see the role of um, uh, or, or where one thing, the transformation of an object, to me, is the creative act. So, for instance, a stick into a tool, you know, the idea that it can become something else other than what's first of all in, in visage. So, um, yeah, there are a series of drawings that look at the, the recent drawings, actually, that look at that sort of idea of uh, how one thing can m morph into another and in a way introduces the idea that all this is on a sort of time base which again is endless and then there is a group of wall installations that look at the uh, different ways in which we perceive uh, the world around us relationships people as objects uh, which um, when we you know result in very simple interpersonal <laughs> networks and gradually as we change our perception to introduce ourselves to more complex perceptions of other people we get the idea of exchange and then we get more complex networks and we get uh, increasing the um, more variety in our sort of perceptions so I see really that um, the uh, interactive network in introduces us to the idea that the world is complex and within complexity there's variety and richness. So this is um, these works will take you through a kind of sequence of uh, of different networks, and that's the um, in a way they're like a kind of um, you can imagine you know a, a computer program, but they're on a wall, and you move in relationship to the frames of information. Well, there's two lots of films. One, a lot of films just look quite simply looking at the idea of objects and relationships between objects and these are domestic objects vases and things which uh, it looks at their kind of monumental architecture really but also the idea that these objects uh, are very similar to our when we perceive these objects is also very similar to the way we perceive people in our culture <laughs>